So welcome. Today we're going to solve IGCC Computer Science October November 2019 paper 23, which means it's uh, paper two variant three. Uh, basically, it's the programming and pre-release paper, and we're going to solve the section B of this paper. So let's start with question number one, which is actually question number two in this paper. Describe the use of a subroutine in a program. So a subroutine is basically uh, is not the whole program, but it's basically like a part of the program. And it is used to perform a frequently used operation within a program. So basically, it's a component of a program that runs a lot of times. Uh, you can also mention that uh, it can be called whenever it's needed, and it can be reused by another program. So, the next question. Name the three types of loop structures used in pseudocode. So, there are three main loop structures used in pseudocode. You have the for loop, you have the while loop, which is known as the preconditioned loop, and you have the repeat loop, which is known as the post conditioned loop. So, basically, the for loop can be denoted by for to next loop, the while loop can be denoted by uh, while do end while loop, and the repeat loop can be denoted by repeat until. So, yeah, that's, that's basically the syntax. Okay, question number four. Let's read through it. The following pseudocode algorithm uses nested if statements. Nested ifs are ba basically if statements within if statements. So let's read it from the beginning. If response is equal to one, then x is equal to x plus y. Else if response is equal to two, then x is equal to x minus y. So the arm mode basically means equal to, it's basically an assignment operator. You're assigning a certain value to the variable. Else, if response is equal to 3, then x is equal to x into 3. The asterisk means multiplication. Else, if response is equal to 4, then x is equal to x by y division. Uh, else, output, no response. End if, end if, end if, end if. Because you're ending all the if statements which we've started out in the beginning. So what I can infer from this program is, if you enter 1, it adds the variables. If you enter 2, it subtracts the variables. If you enter 3, it multiplies the variables. And if you enter 4, it divides the variables. So let's read the question. Name the type of statement demonstrated by the use of if, then, else, and if. So this is basically known as an, as an if statement. And an if statement is a type of condition and selection statement because each if statement consists of a condition. You see, if response is equal to 3, then we do this. That's why it's not as a condition or selection statement. Next, we have to rewrite the pseudocode algorithm using a case statement. So a case statement is basically like an if statement, but you can concise all these nested ifs all into one statement, basically. So case of response, uh, one colon. This means if the if the if response is equal to one, then x is equal to x plus y. Two colon, which means if response is equal to two, x is equal to x minus y, and so on for three and four. If the response was not 1, 2, 3, or 4, uh, you have to otherwise output no response. So basically, if they enter something that's not 1, 2, 3, or 4, the last dish option would be outputting no response, an end case, which is basically ending the case statement. Question number five. The algorithm performs an operation on the array named my data. Div means integer division, so only the whole number part of the result is returned. Example 7 div 2 returns a value of 3. So the div function is pretty much like division. So 7 divided by 2 actually gives you like 3.5. However, the div function records only the integer part of the division. So it returns a value of 3 because the integer part of 3.5 is 3. So let's read through the code now. First is equal to 0. Last is equal to 16. Found is equal to false. Input user input. While uh, first is less than or equal to last and found is equal to false, do middle is equal to first plus last div2. That's just the normal uh, finding the middle number function. If my data uh, middle is equal to user input, so they're using the middle as an index in the my data array, then found is equal to true. Else, if user input is less than my data middle, then last is equal to middle minus one. Else, first is equal to middle plus one if this does not satisfy. End if end if end while output found. So they've given you here the my data array with all the index values which corresponds to a certain value. So now we have to complete the trace table for the input data 10. So let's do the trace table. 
So your first value is zero as I initialized at the beginning, last is 16 as initialized at the beginning, and found is false as initialized at the beginning. It's good to always put uh, a row for just your initialized variables. Next, first is still zero, uh, last is 16, and the user is has inputted 10 in line four. Now, while first is less than or equal to last and found is equal to false, both those conditions are satisfied. Do middle is equal to first plus last. So zero plus 16 divided by two, that gives us eight. So middle value is eight. Next, we have to check the next line. If my data middle is equal to user in, so my data eight. So we have to take the eighth value of the my data um, array, which is 14. So it's not equal to, this does not satisfy. So we have to go to the next if function because there's an else statement here. If user input is less than my data middle, it is less than my data middle, then last is equal to middle minus one because this satisfies, we have to go with the then statement. So last is equal to middle minus one. So middle was eight as we have declared before. So last would be eight minus one, which is seven, which you can see I've done on the next line because every time something happens, you have to update it on to the next line. So your first value is still zero. Your last value is seven. User input is still 10. So let's go through it. So while first is less than or equal to last, still satisfied and found is equal to false, do. Middle is equal to first plus last div two. So first is zero, last is seven. Uh, 0 plus 7 div 2, you'll get, uh, again, as we've done, it's, it's pretty much like the, uh, the example at the beginning, you get a 3 as the value. So if my data middle is equal to user input, so my data 3 is equal to user input. So index number 3 has a value of 6. It's not equal to. So this if statement does not satisfy. So we have to go to the else part. Else, if user input is less than my data middle. We saw that my data middle is 6 and our user input was 10. So the this does not satisfy so we have to go to the else statement of this if statement which is first is equal to middle plus one so our first value is equal to middle plus one our middle value was three as we saw before so first would be three plus one which is four as you can see i'll update on the next line so four and seven is our last values correspondingly first is still less than or equal to last and found is still false middle is equal to first plus last div two so you get four plus seven div two which is eleven div, div two which is five if my data middle is equal to user in, so my data five, my data five is 10, it does satisfy. Then found is equal to true. So found is equal to true now. And, uh, and then the whole while statement ends here because you can see here when found is equal to false, it can only when found is equal to false, this loop will continue. If found is no longer equal to false, if found is equal to true, then the loop completely stops. It comes out of the loop and it outputs found. Output found would be output true. So it outputs true. So that's uh, that uh, trace table in a nutshell. Now, oops, sorry. Um, subdivision B. Describe the function being performed by the algorithm. So as I've explained before, the uh, this algorithm is actually searching for the value that you've inputted while using an array of sorted data. So you can see that we have entered a number 10 and the, the function has indirectly been trying to find out our number without using the variable itself. Uh, it's trying to find out the number 10. So we've inputted 10. It's trying to use its array to find the number 10. So eventually it got uh, index number five, which is value 10. So it's basically you're inputting a number and it's trying to find that number with the help of logic using an array rather than just outputting the number. So it's a bit counterintuitive, but it's programming. Okay, uh, question number six. Draw four different flowchart symbols and describe how they are used in a program flowchart. So this is a flowchart. It's used to narrate an algorithm and the steps in an algorithm. So I've written some answers here. They only need four, but I put five. So the first symbol is the ellipse, which is the terminator start. It basically indicates the start of a program or the end of a program. Next, you have the square or a rectangle, as some people like to call it, um, which is a process block. It's used to show calculations like arithmetic operations like one plus one or a variable plus variable or variable minus variable, things like that. Um, then this is a parallelogram, which indicates the input or output function, such as uh, telling the user to input something or like printing something. Next, you have the uh, diamond or yeah, the diamond, which is a decision statement to show condition. It's basically an if statement. And next you have a circle, which indicates continuation to extend the flowchart and allow it to join up. So whenever you're at the end of your page, you put a circle at the end and then you put the circle on the next page, indicating that it's going from one page to another. Question number seven. A teacher has decided to use a database table as her mark book for her computer science class, which, has, which she has called mark book. For each student, the following data will be recorded. First name, last name, their year 10 score and their year 11 score. 
The class has 32 students. State the number of fields and records required for this database. So the number of fields, the fields are basically the columns and the records are the rows. So the fields contain a certain info, a piece of information and the records contain the students or the people and it has a set of information about that person, thing or event. So the number of fields, we have name, last name, year 10 and year 11 scores. You have four fields and you have 32 students. So you'll get 32 rows. So you'll get uh, 32 records. Question number B. The data in mark book is stored under categories, heading, uh, headings, uh, last name, first name, year 10 score, and year 11 score. State with the uh, reason whether any of these headings would be suitable as a primary key. So a primary key is similar to an index in array. It basically uniquely identifies a record. So like a serial number, for example, etc. But in this situation, none of these fields can be used as a primary key, uh, key because none of them are unique. You can see first name, uh, sorry, the first name isn't unique because two people can have the same first name. Last name can't be unique because two people can have the same last name. Same with year 10 and year 11 scores. They're not unique, so they can't be used as primary keys. So the last question, question number seven, complete the query by example to only display the first name, last name, year uh, 10 score of each student who achieved 50 or more uh, in their year 10 test. The output uh, should be in test score order with the highest mark at the top of the list. So basically, we have a database of data. The purpose of a query by example is to fetch a certain amount of data with certain criteria. So I recommend whenever you're doing these query by example questions, you underline all the necessary conditions. So the four criteria here is we need to have the first name, last name and year 10 score. So those are the three fields which we are using. All three belong to the mark book um, table. And then now in the sort column, they said that um, they should be in test score orders with the highest mark at the top, which means it should be descending order or decreasing order, highest at top, lowest at bottom. So descending order for year 10 uh, test score, there were no other uh, things required for the first name, last name. Then they required us to display all these three fields. So we have to show this, show this, show this, which means they will be displayed in the final results. And they also said that the test score of each student um, who achieve 50 or more, which means greater than or equal to 50 marks should be the criteria for marks also. So this is how you complete a query by example.